Good morning, everyone. I hope the bright sun will warm your hearts today and keep you in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, as we gather over the space of our separation in mind and heart, let us open our hearts and souls to the ever-present mercy of God, his love and his peace. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The Gospel of the Lord. Take it back, it's the word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Glory 
be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have the wonderful story about Mary Magdalene. The word Magdalene in English evolves into maudlin, and this is because of her weeping. In fact, there were commentators, including Pope Gregory the Great, who thought that the woman in Luke, who anointed Jesus' feet, and washed them with her tears must have been Mary Magdalene because, again, the weeping. Well, I'm sure Mary had other things to do besides weep, but she was very emotional. And she was experiencing a deep and profound grief. Not only had her dearest friend died, not only was he murdered, in front of her very eyes, but now his body was missing. So she was in a very agitated state. And because of her agitation, when she saw Jesus, she did not recognize him. Now, admittedly, this is true of many people, Is it because his appearance was so different, or is it because they weren't actually looking for him? Do we see what we're not looking for? I believe that there is a great deal that we could see if we looked for it in terms of the presence of God in our daily lives. For example, take the present quarantine. It's really a bummer in many ways. Not only can we not get out, we can't relate to our dearest friends and other members of our families who are far away. And we stay far away. I have a dear friend in the nursing home. I can't visit him. And he's very lonely. And there are many people like this. So there are many bad things. But through all this, if we're quiet enough, we can sense some strength, some presence does not really 
from us. It's something broader and richer and deeper. But it's part of who we are now because God is with us. And even before the coming of Christ, God has always been with all of his creation. The creation absolutely depends upon God. It cannot exist without God. Unfortunately, our consciousness is not always that attuned, however, to the presence of God. Whether in nature itself, there are moments, of course, maybe an absolutely gorgeous dawn or sunset or mountain or moonbeam, something might arrest our awareness momentarily and we might realize the presence of beauty, which is God. God is the infinite beauty. But we can also exclude a great deal of that presence from our consciousness. We cannot exist without God, but we can be aware without much awareness. And that's, I think, Mary Magdalene's problem and our problem. Jesus was able to awaken her with just her name, Mary. But Jesus will call each of us by our name. We have to be really quiet enough to hear it. With confidence that God always is with us, let us offer our prayers. For all members of the church, may the risen Lord inspire our witness to the gospel each day, we pray. For our national and local leaders, may God guide them in working together to address the needs of the most vulnerable, especially in this time of quarantine, we pray. For those who are discouraged by illness, may God bring them full healing of mind and body, we pray. For catechists and parents and those who minister to this faith community in the liturgy, may God bless their efforts, we pray. For the faithful departed, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom, by the communion of saints, we pray. And today we hold up my friend, Father George Hurley, in the Springs, in Monarch Landing, and Mary Dugovich, who is also in a nursing facility. And all those in nursing facilities are cut off from family and friends by this virus. So we pray for them in a very special way that the Lord may visit them with a special gift of presence. For that we pray. And for the intention of today's Mass, Jean Wolf, we pray. And we pause now for our own personal intentions.
for all our intentions and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, to him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us share with one another in our thoughts and minds, in our wills the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon, if you have risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Mind the things that are above. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear us, almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>